music. One second. Coming to you from cloudy Portugal today. And Alex Smale is currently on a plane <laughs> and he's managed to break Infusionsoft. So that is the email delivery service. And therefore, we're going to have low numbers today, I reckon, because there's going to be a lot of people not knowing how to get in. Um, so, Taryn, would you do me a favour? Would you be able to pop a note in the Facebook group with the Zoom link just to let people know that they can just jump on straight onto Zoom? Um, that would be amazing as we can't email anybody. Um, who's here for the first time? Let's sell what you know show. Apart from you, Holly. <laughs> Good morning. How's it going? Anybody here for the first time? I'm not surprised. I think all the new first timers won't be able to get in because they haven't got, haven't got the email delivering the link. Well, anyway, welcome back, guys. It's great to have you here. Um, Alex, as I said, is currently on a plane. I don't even know where he's going. Where's he going, Taryn? He's off on holiday somewhere. Oh, yeah, I've just told her to do something and now I'm asking her to speak. <laughs> and I was muted. Um, he's on Edinburgh, I believe. Oh, yeah. He's going to Edinburgh. Didn't he just go to Edinburgh? Yeah. Well, there we go. Um, and so today what we've got in store for you is Holly Barris is in the building to do a session with you on branding, on getting yourself out there. Good morning, Holly. How are you? Good morning. Very well, thank you. What's he going to Edinburgh for? What's in Edinburgh? Apart from, uh, Fringe Festival? Is he up there? My sister-in-law's at that at the minute. Maybe he's gone for some laughs. Fringe is amazing. I've only been once. It's so good. Have you been, Holly, to the Fringe? No. No. I don't go too okay. north. I'm as north as I can go. I need to go south and warm. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, isn't it? It's like, I really like the look of Iceland, but I just can't. Yeah, can't I keep buying that up as well, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, and also we're supposed to have Ali or Jay here, so I'm going to message them and find out, well, I think it's Jay this morning, um, because what we normally do is we kick off with a little coaching session from Ali. Oh, James, is that Jay? Is he coming as James? <laughs> Sometimes he does. Well, I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, well, let's do this then. Holly, should we dive straight in with your yeah. session? Yeah. And then what we'll do is if Jay does come along, then he can do his mindset coaching session with you guys. And in the meantime, I shall go and see if there's anyone lost at sea trying to get in. Um, and we'll just improvise like that. Does that sound okay? Awesome. So who here doesn't know who Holly is? Anybody? Okay. Just write those names down. <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> do you know who I am? Do you know um, who I am? Yeah. So me and Holly have known each other for about four years now, and I have watched Holly go from startup business to just becoming this absolutely incredible, fully fledged, self-made entrepreneur. Um, all kind of started with Instagram, didn't it, Holly? Instagram it coaching. With anything I could get money from. Well, yeah, that's true as well. <laughs> Anything you can do. Yeah, it started with doing like VA stuff and then got specialized in Instagram, really good at Instagram, helping people, you know, improve their following and their engagement and getting customers from Instagram. And has now morphed into supporting people build incredible personal brands. And I'm just going to hand the floor to you, Holly, and let you take it from there because I don't want to say any more because I'll probably get it wrong. <laughs> yes, Bab. Right. Hello, people. Okay, so I was having a bit of a chuckle actually when um, I was sat waiting for the music to stop and the screen to come on and a real person to appear um, to grab a pen and paper because um, you actually don't need that with what I'm going to take you through. And it will become evident why it's not, um, I'm not going to take you through a step one, step two, step three, step four, because that's the quickest way to fail when you're trying to create, carve out your own place in the market, because we have to shift the way we think about what we're doing. And this is where most people, the vast majority of people go wrong. So when you're trying to stand out online, which we will flip that in the next 20, 30 minutes, um, it's because we are trying to follow a set process that someone's 
laid out for us, which actually probably isn't true at all or right for us as a human, human being. So you don't need to write anything down, but just sit and think about the stuff that I'm going to shove in your face in a minute. So and really see how that flips to your current way of thinking to the most effective way of getting what you want, which is building a really strong brand so that you get lots of monies and you can do all the things you want to do. So, right. <laughs> I always laugh at this bit. I'm so crap at sharing screen fluidly and seamlessly. So hold please call us while I do the share screen thing. Right, I've just spotted Jace here. Cordelia, do you want me to um, stop? Or do you want me to carry on? Welcome, Jay. Sorry to keep you all waiting. <laughs> Good morning. Hello, <clears throat> you guys. Good morning, Jay. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks oh, for joining thanks. us. Yeah, nice. Thanks, yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us. It's good cool. to see you. Um, do you want me to? Start? Well, I'm happy because I've not like shared screen yet. So Jay can do his uh, shebang, and then I can flip back to it, or whatever's fine. What do you want to do, Jay? Do you want to go first or second? I, I can come back. If Holly's in a flow, I can come back and... Um... I can start again. It's fine. Okay. Well, let's let's do Jay's section first then. Yeah. If it, because otherwise, we're going to keep keep you around for the next half an hour, 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Although I feel like that should be your punishment. No, I'm joking. Um... Wait, it's not a bloody punishment. What are you saying? <laughs> oh, no, I'm joking. Okay, okay let, 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 let's do this then, because it's quite prominent on my topic, actually. <laughs> so um, I, I'll jump straight into it. Good morning, everyone. N nice to see you. I've been on a, a 10 day break. I've been in Spain for 10 days and I've had food poison for the last three days. So that's my excuse. Um, use your imagination. <laughs> so um so today i want to talk to you about procrastination this is one of my favorite topics um so procrastination uh what is it it's the action of delaying or postponing something uh derived from the latin verb procrastinare to put it off until tomorrow now who are our procrastinators in the room and you can be honest here and this is one of the biggest things i i will tell you about this more in a second so um procrastination is something that's really common it's something we see all of the time especially when we find ourselves pushing uh, to do something new, something we've maybe never done before, something that's out of our comfort zone. And what I really want to do today, my goal for today, is to really get you to think differently about your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. Because what happens is when we change how we see things, how we think about things, how we feel about things, when we change the way that we see the world, the world actually changes. So I want to begin really by saying that I am a master at procrastination. I procrastinate every single day. And sometimes I even have fun with it. Sometimes I actually enjoy procrastination. Netflix is amazing. And lounging about on the sofa is amazing. And you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, I thought, you were going to talk to us about procrastination and how we overcome it, how we crush it, how we keep moving forward and don't keep putting things off until tomorrow, but instead make progress. And I will get that, get to that a little bit later. And you might be thinking, well, he's not a very good coach, this guy who's teaching us this. Now, I want to ask you, and I like to make my uh, little uh, presentations quite engaging. So it, it relies on you guys jumping in the chat for me. So if you could just go into the chat for me and just answer this question, what are kind of the thoughts and feelings that you get or judgments that you get when you actually hear the word procrastination? Just go ahead and put that in the chat for me. And just be honest here, whatever's coming up for you, just pop that in the chat. Because I'm sure either if you're not a procrastinator, you may even not consider yourself a procrastinator. And we'll see in just a second. Uh, you may know someone and you may have judgments over them. And that's OK, too. So let's see what people are coming up with. Lazy Colin Adams. Yeah, 
Why am I not starting? That can be a question that comes up a lot. Fear of failure, fear of uh, being rejected, being ignored, comfort of putting it off. Yeah, we're on the right lines. Not knowing the first steps. Yeah, not having clarity, not motivated enough to do it. Hate doing boring tasks. Who loves, who in here loves the enjoyable tasks, the exciting tasks, but not the boring ones that you know you need to do, but you really don't want to do? Yeah, exactly. Uh, getting it together, but also time for creativity, failure, lazy. Yeah, so we all have uh, judgments around what procrastination is or what it looks like, whether that be of other people or in many cases of ourselves. Who are the people who judge themselves? Have we got anyone like that who kick their own ass, who critique themselves? And they're like, you should be doing this why are you so lazy get your ass in order get moving forward and everybody has their own version of this and in a survey of americans and you might have what's called the confirmation bias which i'll talk about in a second in a survey of americans 20 percent of them admitted to being chronic procrastinators with even high performers admitting to procrastination. So procrastination is actually really normal, but procrastination can come in many different forms. So what does this really look like? So see if you relate to any of these that I'm quickly going to share. You might find yourself saying this, I work well under pressure. I need the pressure. I need pressure to get things done. Anybody else in here like really busy? Just raise your hand if you're really busy. Anyone got a really full calendar all of the time? <laughs> you got a full calendar? You're the type of person that um, needs, needs that um, deadline. We call it lastminute.com. You need that deadline to actually get it done. You, if someone gives you three months to do something, you wait two months and 29 days to actually start. And then you do it all in a day or maybe within a week. So there's this type of person that we see in procrastination. The problem with this type of procrastinator is they often experience high amounts of stress. So they don't plan for it. They don't take incremental steps. And so they often experience high amounts of stress. You're the type of person to judge yourself. I'm so lazy right now. In fact, these are the opposite of being lazy. They, they tend to blame inaction on laziness or stubbornness rather than it. They're actually tired. You get type A personality types, which are go, 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 like high performing. This is me a lot of the time. And I would rather say that oh, I'm just being lazy rather than admit I'm just tired and I need to take a break. I just had 10 days off and it was the best 10 days I've ever had. I needed it. I desperately needed it. But I didn't want to admit it. <laughs> didn't want to admit like I, I need to stop. I need to take a break. You're overcommitted. Um, you're busy, they say. Uh, as I said before, the procrastinator is great at filling up their calendar, but often finds themselves overwhelmed. And I'm busy is often an excuse. They find themselves avoiding doing the things that are necessary. So they might find themselves, and I found this particularly in lockdown. So I discovered I was a great procrastinator when I used to go to a workspace all of the time. I used to go and do co-working and I never realized the main reason I went there. Now I'm very much an extrovert. I love people. And instead of doing the tasks that I needed to do, I used to go to the workspace and I used to talk all day. I never used to get anything done. I just used to talk all day. <laughs> and so I used the workspace as a way of avoiding. Now, when lockdown came, <laughs> I found myself working from home. And so I decided to find something else to occupy my time distract. So I started cleaning the house. I started, I had the tidiest office you can possibly imagine. And my fridge was constantly empty because I was constantly raiding it. But another thing I used to do, being typically British, is I used to make cups of tea, cups of tea and coffee. I'd make like 15 cups of tea a day. And I realized this wasn't good for me. So I then gave up caffeine completely because. I realized this was just a coping mechanism for me and I needed to shift it. SOS, this is what you're calling 
shiny object syndrome. Who are the people that are great at buying the next program, the next course, reading the next book, but not following through? You're always educating yourself. You're stuck in education mode. We call that shelf development. You're always learning, but you're not always implementing and follow through. You might start, but not actually follow through. The perfectionist. Who are perfectionists in here? has got to be right. I've got to get it right first time. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. These types of people often find themselves getting into analysis paralysis and they get too bogged down in the detail and it can often lead to some indecisiveness, not taking that step because it's not quite enough. It's not quite right. Now, whatever you believe about procrastination, we've seen there was a few lenses in which people were seeing procrastination it's lazy it's bad it's wrong it, why is it happening i need clarity whatever the thoughts that we're coming up for you you have certain beliefs about procrastination whether it be good or bad and what do people tell us about working hard that if you don't work hard you're lazy depending on your upbringing my upbringing was very much uh, you need to work hard to be successful. You need to work hard to make money. And if you're not working, you're just lazy. If you're somebody on benefits, you're lazy. Just put them under that complete blanket <laughs> approach, even though they may have a disability, even though they have, may have some challenges in life, they're all just lazy. If they're on benefits, they're lazy. Now, that's not to say there aren't people in there that are, but it's also not to say there's people in the workforce that aren't either that we all have a lens in which we see the world. And this lens that we see the world is something called a confirmation bias. And a confirmation bias is where we always find evidence to prove what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about the world, what we believe to be true. Do you ever find that when you believe something, you always find the evidence to prove it? Anyone got one of them? Anyone, anyone ever thought that they were, there was something wrong with them? Maybe they thought they were a failure. Maybe they thought they couldn't do it. Maybe they thought they needed another course. They weren't experienced enough. They didn't have enough time. Anybody else found all of that evidence to prove that to be the case? Yeah, you find it. You find what you look for. And when you believe something about the world, about yourself, you will always find the evidence to prove yourself to be right and this gives you the illusion of control it gives you this sense of certainty so we have to look at how we can flip that and we can see procrastination as something that may be something that's really good for you instead of something that's really bad for you something that's a real problem see here's the truth um, in unqualified in NLP, neuro linguistic programming, in NLP, we say that every behavior is motivated by a positive intent for the person taking the action. Now, let me just let that land for a second. Every behavior or action is motivated by a positive intent for the person taking the action. Everything you do. Every action or behavior you take has some kind of payoff. So if you're procrastinating, there must be some kind of payoff. Now, if we understand that the human mind's primary directive is not to help you realize your dreams, fulfill your goals, because it really does not care about that. It honestly doesn't. As much as you might think it does, your primary function of your mind is just to keep you alive. It's to survive. It's to keep you safe. So it's going to do everything it can to meet that fundamental need. And th the reason you might be procrastinating right now could be your mind's way of communicating some kind of feedback to you feedback that something may be risky. How many of you have experienced? some kind of uh, fear, and the result is you've avoided making a decision. You've had the, maybe that feeling of anxiety or uncertainty or lack of clarity, and so you've avoided 
making a decision. That's feedback. Now, none of this is right or wrong. And I want you to just see it as that. What if procrastination was not right or wrong? It was just feedback. It's your mind's way of giving you feedback. Think about this for a second. Those of you who are lastminute.com type of people, what if the feedback you were getting because you were always leaving everything to lastminute.com? And I've got a good friend called um, Amy, and Holly will know her. I'm sure Cordelia will know her as well. And she's always late. She's always late. And it drives me insane. Being ex-military five minutes, if you're not five minutes early, and this is why this is so um, prominent on this call, right? Five minutes late. If you're not five minutes early, you're already late. She's always late. And it drives me insane. So there must be some kind of payoff she gets from that. There must be some kind of identity she has. There must be some kind of reason she puts things off and she turns up late all the time. So there's some kind of payoff. For those of you who are lastminute.com, what if that is feedback? So that's your mind's way of actually communicating that, hey, you are somebody who needs pressure and that's okay. Now, what if we can take that information, that feedback, and my advice is to get to the root cause of it. But in the meantime, what if we take that feedback and say, OK, I know I work well under pressure. It's stressful. It's not particularly pleasurable. So let's hire a coach or some kind of accountability team, which we have in the Sell What You Know community. Let's hire a coach or have some kind of team that constantly puts me under pressure so that I'm equipped to actually consistently do my go achieve my goals. When I, uh, I was on recently on a transformational leadership program, and one of the things I realized for myself is I too was a last minute.com, I was an adrenaline junkie. And so what I did is I said to my team, okay, I need to contact 20 people every day, and I was putting on an online event, I need to contact 20 speakers every day. And what I want you to do, and there was 10 people in my team, if I haven't called, if I haven't checked in with you and confirmed that I'm complete by this time, here's my number, here's my partner's number. I want you all to be ringing me on social media. I want you to be ringing my number, ringing my partner until I actually get it complete. Now I knew because I had that accountability, I would get it done. And I got it done three hours before I was meant to every single day. So I created a setup which allowed me to follow through and not procrastinate because I used the feedback that I was getting to allow me to create an environment that was productive for me to actually move forward. Was it fun? Not particularly, but I got the job done. So the real question you have to ask yourself is what is the feedback of procrastination giving you? What's it trying to tell you about yourself and how can you use it to your advantage and I want to finish and leave you with this at the start of this I said I am a master procrastinator every day I procrastinate what if you too are a master procrastinator and just by the very nature of being on this call you are procrastinating because in life, we are always procrastinating. And it's a really good thing. Right now, I'm procrastinating on not eating. Right now, I'm procrastinating on not going to the gym. Right now, I'm procrastinating on not drinking tea every minute of every day. And that's a really good thing. Because it means that I get a chance to recover. It means that <laughs> I'm not massively obese. It means that I'm not high as a kite on caffeine. And so as I said, the goal of this was to challenge you to think differently, to see your feelings, to see the way you perceive things differently. And what if you were to see procrastination as not something that's bad or wrong or lazy, but something that you can use to your advantage to actually help you progress, which is the complete opposite of what the definition of procrastination actually is. Thank you very much. Boom. Thank you very much, Jay. That was awesome.
I'm definitely procrastinating at the moment. I've got a massive event next week and I have not got my slides or talk ready yet. <laughs> and so I really resonated with what you were saying just there. I think it happens to all of us um, and it's about catching ourselves so we don't end up in that downward spiral of procrastination and guilt because you're guilty because you're procrastinating and now you're procrastinating because you're feeling guilty and now you're feeling guilty because you just haven't opened the laptop in a week because you can't face it <laughs> so and that's really really Cordelia, helpful. I just want to add this one last thing mm, please do. one of the things I say to all the guys in the community if you're going to procrastinate do it well <laughs> yeah. if you're really procrastinating and you're having a bad day where you're like, I'm procrastinating. I know I'm procrastinating. Do it. Go all out. Watch your Netflix or whatever you need to do. Just procrastinate and just make a decision and commit to yourself that tomorrow <laughs> you will get it done. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. So for those of you that have just joined us, this is the Sell What You Know show. We are live here every week with some training and some support for those of you that are wanting to or are just starting out in getting started with your very first or maybe second or whatever business in coaching, consulting, mentoring, etc. We're also live over on Facebook. So hello to anyone watching over there. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the chat. So what we've got coming up next for you is our segment with Holly Barris. And if you have any questions, drop them in the chat over on Facebook or click that link in the description of the video. Come and join us live over on Zoom so that you can be in the room with us. So Holly, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And unlike Jay, I am very high on caffeine now because I've had a chance to make another cup of coffee while he did his thing. <laughs> oh, do you know what? Do you know what? I've got a coffee, right? But I'm in Portugal and I don't know a word of Portuguese and I've accidentally bought goat's milk. Oh. <laughs> How do you mix up normal milk and goat's milk? Like, if you're going to have a Portuguese word. <laughs> I, I just didn't. I just didn't even. I just looked like milk. So I was like, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Right, let's um, get back to where we were, which was me trying to fumble my way around the green button. So, uh, 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 uh. if at any point, I'm going to assume you can see that, unless anyone tells me otherwise. Um, if at any point you've got questions, unmute and ask them. Um, if you jump in the gun, I'll tell you to hold your horses and I'll come to that later on. Or um, if not, I'm quite happy. This is a two way conversation, um, not me chucking a load of boring slides in your face. Because who needs that on a Thursday morning? Not me. Right. OK, so what we are going to go through um, in the next 20 ish minutes Um I am going to go through these slides. I've done it on slides so that you, you've actually got a visual to, um, to look at. And also it helps me remember what I'm saying. Otherwise, we go off on major tangents when you're in Holy World. Um, but I want to have this to be more of a conversation, either within it or at the end of it. So don't be too put off by slides. So we're going to uh, uncover or I'm going to show you the shifts that you need to have. So it's, it is kind of a bit mindset shifty. Um, but just the way that you are looking about standing out online. When, when people come to me, they're usually in one of um, two situations. One, they're just starting out and they want to do it properly. They want to set the stall up properly. Or they're a bit further down, usually 12 to 18 months within it, um, within the business, when they've realised what they were doing to start with isn't quite hitting or it's exhausting. Um, trying to do that and they just want to get off this constant cycle so they you might find yourself in one of those two places and either way is fine if you suddenly appear to and you're like what what has this even got to do with me there's a you're walking around ikea and all of a sudden you're in like children's the children's department um this will apply to you too it applies to anyone i always talk through a coach's lens coaches experts because that's who i work with um, but it applies to absolutely everyone, whatever your business, whether it's a service-based business or a product business, it's still the same thing when you actually dig to the deeper layers of it. So the truth, how about that for a hook? 
about how to see, uh, be seen as an expert, drown out all the online noise and book more dream clients because let's not beat around the bush. That's what we actually want to do. Tell me I'm wrong. Do it actually because I can't see chat. Right, um, let's get going. Hang on. There we are. So who is it for? So some of these might resonate, some of them might not. You're churning out content day after day and feel like your insides are just dying because you're not getting in anything back. Now, I don't just mean engagement. I actually mean starting real life conversations because we are humans who work with humans, um, but you're not getting that. Maybe that you, uh, you know what you've got to offer is absolutely amazing and it will help so many people but you've, you've got no idea how to attract your the dream clients. Now, I say dream clients because we don't want to be attracting just any old person who's got some money to spend with us. Otherwise, that's that you build a beast and hate your business as well. So we want to be attracting our dream clients. You might be a mega overwhelm and not sure how to raise your profile because uh, as to become the go-to person in whatever niche it is that you've got. And you're just drowning in overwhelm, being there, done that. And you're sick and tired of all the online noise because it's so noisy, especially since lockdown. Thank you, Corona, for pushing everyone online. And we've got even more noise to deal with. And you want to carve out your place so that you can be seen, heard, and most importantly, paid. And this is what I hear all the time. You feel like everyone's a coach. It really feels like that, doesn't it? it? Everyone in the world is a coach and you're not sure how you're different and how you can stand out against all the other people. Okay, so buckle up, buttercup. This is what we are diving into. First of all, we're going to look at the non-negotiable mode of operation. Like This is non-negotiable. You have to do this. Secondly, we're going to be looking at putting your stake in the ground, why that's important and what that even means. Being sold on yourself first. So before you even can do anything else, you've got to be sold on yourself. What does that mean? Then we're going to... Sorry, um, sorry Siri. I'm not asking you. I'm talking. Does anyone else do that? Like if you wave your arms around when you're talking, Siri picks up and wants to help. Uh, we're going to un unleash you. And the final thing that I'm going to let you in on is how to do this quick, because who's got all the time in the world to spend faffing around trying to do this? So... Tell me, I'm going to open chat actually. Oh no, I'm not because it's too faffy. Um, but nod away so that everyone else can see if any of these sound familiar. Are you asking yourself, how the hell do I stand out in all this noise that's out there? A lot. Do you dread looking at insights because you know it's going to be like crickets? There's just nothing there. Nothing's happening on insights. None of the uh, stuff that you're putting out, whether it's on social media, whether it's on your email list, whether it's in real life. Remember those days when we did in real life stuff? Um, and you're just not getting the, or not starting building the relationships with people to move them through what's essentially a sales funnel until they become high ticket clients. Are you thinking, if I've got to keep creating content like this, is this even worth it? Shall I go back and get a job or whatever it is that you've come from? You've pivoted your business. This is a biggie, like especially over the last 18 months. The business has had to change or you've chosen to uh, pivot slightly, like Ross Geller, total flashback there. And you don't know how to carve out your place in this new market, whether that's you've been offline and now you're online, whether you've niched more specifically and you're trying to carve that place out and you're really frustrated because you can't move forward while everyone else is. Who thinks that everyone else can do this, but it's just you that is struggling for some reason. You can't make it work. That's not true, but that's what we think. Me too. And this is, what this is what happens when we let, I kind of touched on it before, is that the business that you started, for whatever reason you started your business, to give you some level of control over your freedom, whatever, I know freedom is a huge loaded word, but whatever that means to you, but actually it feels like you've created anything but that freedom that you actually started your business for. So how long are you not going to do something about it? People, um, when I talk to people, like nodding, yes, 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 that all sounds really good, Holly. Yeah, I need to do that, which when Jay was talking about procrastination made me chuckle because the action is missing. So we all know we need to do something about it. I'm going to show you today 
what you need to think about to actually get the results that you want to do, but you have to do something about it. Otherwise, nothing's going to change and nothing's going to happen. So when you do do this, because I'm sure you are action takers by mere facts that you're here and you're not just watching this to put off doing something else. I didn't get that. Siri, try again? shut up. Every time you posted, you knew you'd get a DM or an email back. Someone would reply to your email. Or if you're talking to real life people, um, that they want to take it to the next step. This is what happens when you sort this stuff out, that people are really listening to you. Like they really want to they go, they find you to consume your content or to consume your solution to their problem because you're seen as the go-to expert. You love putting content out there, but we can't get away from putting content out there, whatever form um, that takes. We have to put content out there, but you love it because it's, it's your thing. It's what you do. It's what you're talking about. And it comes easily that like you're not sat there for 27 million hours putting off creating content because you're not quite sure what this valuable content actually even is. Once you do this, once you actually get to grips and put this into action, you can get results almost immediately. I'm not going to say like definitely immediately, but almost immediately. People I work with that like, will do the thing, will do this work. And then within a week, definitely within a month, they're getting high ticket clients put um, coming through to them because paying clients because they've, it just clicks. Everything just clicks. You can get that, those results really quickly. And what if in three months of actually putting yourself out there like this, you started to grow a waiting list? Oh, the dream. So who even am I to be banging on about this? I'm going to go through this very quickly because let's get to the juicy bits. I'm a personal brand powerhouse. Oh, I love that. Um, and I make sure coaches get a really clear, powerful brand voice so that you can nail your message and book more high ticket clients without the ick, the ick that I felt for so many years because I was trying to follow someone else's thing that really wasn't right or true to me. Five, more than five years, growing brands on Instagram from zero to really sought after businesses who people are seeking out and the businesses just transform. The go-to for empowering coaches to carve out their place in the market, knowing what makes you different and then you become the expert in whatever niche it is that you've set. I work with amazing, huge, huge brands, as well as small, just starting out coaches, like the whole spectrum. And the same thing applies to all stages of business brand, but you want to turn it into a brand, not just a business. And this is what I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm a mum of three. I live near Leeds, hence the accent. If you need a translator, Google it. Uh, I've got an obsession with making moments and memories that matter. If you want to know my story, go Google that. You'll find it. And I've got a very unhealthy obsession with grilled halloumi. Right, let's get into this. So the five shifts that you need to um, think about differently. The non-negotiable mode of operation is operate with integrity. Now, most people are like, yeah, integrity is like, it should be as a, as a good human being. Integrity should definitely be up there at the top of your values. But I don't mean integrity to other people. Obviously, you operate with integrity within your business. But I'm talking now about integrity to yourself. What's true to you? And this is what, while we're busy trying to find the next hack or the next system or buying the next program. Kim, I did notice you chuckling a lot of times while Jay was talking about that. Um, we all do it. Like we just this shiny object because this is going to be the answer. But while we're doing that, we are we're shifting away, we're pivoting away from what's really true and right for us. So I'm talking about uh, integrity to ourselves. Showing up as the true you matters. Now, if someone said that to me five years ago, I'd be like, oh, I ain't got time for this woo-woo shit. Like, I'm just not into that. And I don't mean this with woo-woo either. I mean, this is like getting really honest with yourself. Like who, how do you want to show up? Who are you? who are you show up like that I used to um speak the queen's english when I did, did videos and I would sit like a 1980s news right, uh, reader and that is just is not me at all the moment I shifted and switched into just embracing full holly literally overnight and I, this is not an exa exaggeration 
overnight, my business completely changed. So showing up as a true you matters for other people and for yourself. You've got to commit to being honest and let that settle a second because most of the time we're not honest about what we actually want, what we believe and what we want to say because we're trying to sugarcoat things into either we get swept up into, especially in this world, like this, the industry that we're in as coaches, as entrepreneurs, also I hate that word, is so full of BS and like people want 10 figure months, well, what, but five figure months want 10 grand months. Why? Like, what's so special about 10 grand? Or we want, they want six figure years. Well, why? Six figures could be 100 grand or 999, 999, <laughs> six nines. Online, tell the red black See, just showing up as me, like, I can't figure out how to say that number. What is it? Anyway, sidetracked. You got to be, commit to being honest about what you want, not what all the swirl and the noise of all these groups that we're in are telling us we want, is what, what's right for you. You've got to take the mask off. Holly, I don't wear a mask. I'm not wearing a mask. Uh, yes, uh, we are. We are. And the, we've got to be aware of it. Even now, I always second, uh, like, send shit with me. It's like, is this true? Is this true? Or is this some kind of facade I'm putting on? Um, even unintentionally, just that, is this true? Every time I'm doing stuff, it erodes your integrity. So wherever we've got this mask of whether it's perfection, whether it's um, putting a mask on us um, because she does it like this, like this, all the people that we're comparing ourselves to, and she, it seems to be working, so I'm going to put that mask on. It's just eroding your integrity all the time, feeling like we've got to be somebody else. We have to communicate from truth with ease and flow. What is like ease and flow for someone that's not woo? What does that even mean? It just means it comes naturally. Like just you spout it out without even thinking. And while when we communicate like that, whether that's through uh, writing copy, whether that's how you show up online within marketing, whether that's how you show up with your coaching, when you're working working one to one with people or in groups or whatever your setup is if you're not coming from that absolute truth at some point it's all going to come tumbling down or you're you're going to hate what you're doing being there done that as well and you've got to embrace your quirks isms weirds and wonderfuls like I was saying with my accent while I was trying to hide that I was always that was just five steps back all the time Whereas I just let it flow and the integrity to uh, like I am at complete integrity with myself while I'm just letting true Holly come out without having to shape it into someone else's idea or our, the perceived idea that we've got of what other people are expecting. Your clients want to work with people with integrity who when you show up as you Whatever the true you is, and that, I know that is a big topic to go down uh, to go down to in within this, and I'm not going to do it within this call. Um, you're giving other people permission to do that as well, so you actually get the best out of your clients. Because if you show up as you, you're giving them permission to show up as them, and then you can actually help them instead of you've both got masks on, pretending to be this other thing that you think you're supposed to show up as, and you never get beneath the surface at surface to really help them bring out the best of whatever the services um, that you're helping them with. Template and cookie cook cutter solutions make you cut corners. And I am not about cutting corners. We do it properly, we do it right, but we do it true to you. Whew. Rant over. Right, secondly, put your damn steak in the ground, like whatever your steak is. And again, if you're not quite sure, most people aren't, that's totally fine, but figure it out. What are you a stand for? What are you putting into the ground? What stake are you putting into the ground? Like, this is what I believe. Like, what are your audience buying into? People don't buy into stuff unless they understand what they're buying into, which is a much bigger picture than the thing that you sell. People really don't care about a program or a PDF or um, a one-to-one -one coaching session if they don't understand what it is that they're buying into. You've got to get off the fence. Like you don't have to have. I always thought I had to be this rebellious, um, go against the grain on purpose to have an opinion. And you don't. You just have to have an opinion. And we've all got an opinion. Um, so get off the fence, people pleasing. That is not going to work quickest way to fail. Ooh, I, I, sh I always shudder at this, but just to throw some actual 
uh, research data into this from a big thing, like good 2021, clients are more likely to buy from a brand with a clear vision because they know what they're buying into. They can get on board with it or not. So what can you say about whatever it is that you do, your thing? This is what I believe and this is why it matters. Can you do that? Can you communicate that clearly to, first of all, yourself and then to the wider world of your ideal audience? So really getting that stake firmly in there and be a stand for yourself. There's so many people, um, myself included, who were so busy doing things for other people and where the work coaches, where the absolute worst for this, because yes, we want to help other people. We've got a thing that can help somebody else. But what about us? What about all of us? Who's saying that? Anyway, um, what about us? What what are we a stand for for ourselves? Because if we're not a stand for ourselves, we certainly can't be a stand for anyone else. Another rant over. Thirdly, you have to be sold on yourself first so how can you expect anyone else to buy into what it is that you're selling or you as a person if you're not sold on yourself first so what happens if you're not sold on yourself first you will be scroll 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 or wherever it is that you're uh, consuming content and you're going to compare yourself to everyone else if you aren't sold on this is who i am this is what i do full stop you're just going to be stuck in comparisonitis forever. You're going to start to pick up and use words that they say, which is not the not true to you. I, I see it all the time. I see people who have not worked with me because they would know better and they would have their own stuff to do, but who definitely consume my content. And when I go look at the website or have a look at whatever it is, I'll read their, their content literally word for word it's words that I use not just like random words but almost in a sentence sometimes and I don't I'm sure they're not because they have integrity they're not doing it on purpose to totally plagiarize what I'm saying and what the content I create is because they're consuming my content so much that becomes their vocabulary which is good for me because I'm in their head but it's not good for them because it's not true to them you're constantly looking for that silver bullet. So if you're not sold on yourself, like Jay was saying earlier, like the program by Anonymous, um, we're constantly looking for the thing that's missing. The thing that clearly we haven't got, we haven't learned it yet, otherwise I'd be doing this. And you don't need to do that. When you're sold on yourself, you don't need to buy another course about trying to, I did a post about this recently, about putting stop putting plasters over the problem and just fix it buying programs, looking for that silver bullet, buying this, that, and the other, it's not going to fix the problem. It's just plasters over it. So you don't have to search for the silver bullet when you're sold on yourself. You won't be putting yourself out there. You won't be as confident to put yourself out there, being visible to where you know you want to be or the level of where your business goals need you to be at because you're not quite sure what makes you different. So forget that you're going to get drowned out in all the noise. You're not going to do it for yourself because you're not actually quite sure. Mm, what, what am I actually putting out there? Um, and it just stops you. So Mr. Procrastination or Miss Pro Procrastination comes back into play again. You're not putting yourself out there and you're not being true uh, and having the integrity that we talked about before with yourself and your goals. What, what is it that you're trying to create here? You start outsourcing shit. <laughs> you start try thinking that you need, need to outsource stuff because clearly you're not good enough. You don't understand the algorithm well enough because you're not getting any feedback or starting conversations with people when you put content out there. Now, I'm all for outsourcing. I love outsourcing. Those boring tasks that Jay was talking about earlier, I outsource them. I only do stuff that lights me up. Uh, anything else, I just outsource them. However, there's a time and a place for outsourcing. If you're outsourcing because you want to, to create this freedom, whatever freedom means um, to you, brilliant. But if you're outsourcing because you feel like you don't understand it or um, that you just need it off your plate, it's causing you too much stress, there's a slight slither of when that's okay. But for the vast majority of time, you don't need to. It doesn't matter that if you're putting stuff out there that connects to your ideal clients, it, your ideal clients will find it. You will get in front of people. But if you're not sold on yourself first, it's not going to happen. 
And then you start feeling like just another coach in a big fat ocean of coaches. It's a, it's a downward spiral. And another thing, a big thing is you start undercharging because you think it's your price that's a problem that people aren't buying. If you're sold on yourself and you're banging yourself outside, like out there all over the place, price is not the problem. You, can, you stick a price on it and people will, will pay for that. Okay, breaking news, people. Hold your knicker elastic. Standing out isn't the game plan. So we're all trying to stand out when actually what we need to do is to stand in. We need to stand in for what's true and right for us, which won't be the same as anybody else. It's really connecting what's um, what's right for you, not trying to stand out in all this noise. Once you start embracing all the things that you're trying to cover up, the, the quirks, isms, weird and wonderfuls, they're the thing that set you apart. When I work with people, we create almost like this little black book um, of all the reasons why they're amazing to work with with their ideal clients and it's those things that co will completely break you off the pack so that you start to carve out that niche a uh, place in the market for you and the best thing is you get to show up as you the real you without having to put any front of anything on and get paid dreamy right step four unleashing you so once you understand or once you start doing all this stuff about um, what is it, what, what, who's you without the mask, what you are stand for, what, uh, which stake have you put into the ground, you have to unleash it. You have to get that stuff out there. It's the confidence part of putting it out. Without doing this, nothing else matters because no one's going to know. You need to be clear, confident and consistent in what you're saying. Otherwise, what of the this juicy like urgh, i always think of like a really cute baby with big fat cheeks you just want to squeeze what are you giving them to grab hold of you need to be very clear consistent and confidently putting it out there unleash it no one else can come near you so see you later competitors because you haven't got any competitors because no one else can do what you do no one else can deliver what you deliver in the way that you deliver it so you haven't got competition not when you put in the true you out there. It makes it simple and sticky, clear, powerful messages, which is a core message of any brand, every single brand makes content simple and sticky, really easy to create and connect by sticky. I mean, connects to your ideal clients. And this is where you've carved out your own place in what feels like, because it is a very noisy and saturated market. You carve your own place out in there. Okay. The quick, the accelerator, the quickest way to do this is to get some help. It's because I'm going to re reel off a million reasons of why you need doing it by yourself is going to take a long time. I'm not going to say you're not going to do it eventually by yourself. Mm, maybe not, but actually getting some help with it, something external is going to make you do it quicker. When we're not clear, we don't put ourselves out there and getting clear by ourselves because we're stuck in our own head, even if we just talk it out loud with a friend um, or these accountability groups or just getting it out of your own head, it will help to clarify things for you. We BS ourselves. Like when, um, how often do you accept less or you settle because, um, for whatever reason, whether it's fear, whether it's uh, procrastination, whether it's laziness, whether it's the unknown, for whatever reason that we're settling um, or making do, when we've got help and there's somebody else there, we can, they will call us out. If he's the right person, they'll call us out on our own bullshit and it will help us to get where we want to be quicker. We're actually blind to how amazing we are. So I talk to people um, and they just think they don't see it in themselves. We don't, none of us do. We don't see it in ourselves, but somebody else sees what we don't see. We never celebrate what makes us different, how, or especially not like somebody else would. All those look, this goes back to the quirks and the isms. People love that about us. People will, people have told me before, people have worked with me that they've come because it's the um the love, how blunt and to the point I am. Whereas before, before I knew better, I wouldn't be that. I wasn't off the fence and I wasn't letting me out. Whereas now people come and work with me purely for that reason. 
there's a million choices out there that look as better, but they know when they come to me, they're going to get the truth with no fluff and to get things into action, to get people the results that they're actually wanting. What is it that makes you different about you? I bet you won't give you give the same answer as your best friend would. And if you could have done this by yourself already, you would have done it already. <laughs> so here's a bit of calling people out. Like if you would have figured it out by yourself, you already would have done. You won't be sat watching this, trying to find out how to do it. <sighs> Jeez, I need a coffee now. Right, so this is what I promised I would show you. Non-negotiable mode of operation. So you have to operate with integrity to yourself. It's a given of any good human, decent human being that you operate integrity to the wider world, but you have to apply that same metric um, and reasoning to yourself, what's true to you. You've got to put your stake in the ground. What is it? What do you believe in? What are you a stand for? Or sometimes what are you a stand against? You've got to be sold on yourself first, then you have to unleash it. You've got to unleash you out there and get some help, whatever form of help that looks like. Okay, hit me. Give me your questions. I'm going to stop uh, sharing so I can see you and give you time to unmute and dare to ask. Unmute and go. Who's going first before I start picking on people? Ralph's going first. Ah, I was just coming to you. I saw you taking an intake of breath. Sounds like he's about. Uh. Fucking brilliant. Hit me while I uh, uh -huh. just ask a semi-long question so I can have a decent slurp. Look, the first thing I want to say is just sensational. Absolutely got it, loved it. Um, I'm not sure that I've got a question um, because it was just so clear and straight to the guts. Um, get That's off fine. The I, words of affirmation. Be who you are. Language. So just tell me how good I am. Ah, uh, look, I happy. <laughs> happy Happily do that, seriously. Um, I suppose my only question is, how much do you cost? <laughs> <laughs> and this is the point. This is the point of a clear message with a clear brand. That is yeah. that not what you want people to come to? Yeah. Uh, you're, you're a perfect. You're a demonstration of everything you've spoken about. So, um, look, that's the only question I got, honestly. Amazing. Well, I don't think I'm allowed because to tell them here. But you know, the website because was at the bottom of the slide. Um, look, I suppose for me, yeah, it, it's it's timely, right? So there's a lot of things that are going on, and you know, I'm working in this cell watch and know, and the whole thing is about, hey Ralph, it's about time you stepped out, showed up as the real, real you rather than the corporate you, um, which is all compromise, as I'm sure you know. Well, not all compromise, but you you need to compromise to some if you're going to survive. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I suppose in your experience, um, what are what are the things that you know are holding people back? You, you know, you you met some and worked with some, broke them through. Um, yeah. What what do you see as the sort of two or three key things that keep people in the cupboard? Yeah. Um... <laughs> The, the, I kind of mentioned it um, before, is, is the complete swirl of BS that we're in within this industry. Um, I love this entrepreneurship, oh, shudder at the word, industry yeah, because it gives the freedom, but there's so much BS that just swirls around in it that yeah. um, is right for some people and completely wrong for most people. Um, yeah. So this is the power of... This is the power of really going, tapping into you, what's right for you. Because yeah. if we are, um, so like Cordelia said at the, at the beginning, like I used to be known for Instagram uh, because oh. that's what I specialised in and knew it inside out, all that kind of stuff. But actually the people, the problem was never Instagram. The problem was that in the, whatever content platform is there, but the kicker, the thing that matters is under here so yeah. we can do hashtag research like till we're blue in the face but actually <laughs> it, it doesn't matter if you're no. if you haven't if you're not giving out what's um if you're not putting out there the truth the real truth yeah. to you nothing's yeah. ever going to stick at some point it's going to fall yeah. down so yeah the biggest thing is being consumed by all this hype and swirl that's out there 
Um, yes, or, yes, you, yes. You have to follow this system or you have to follow this yes, blueprint or template yes. when that might yes. not be right for you. And that's, God, I can... Well, it's not the you, biggest isn't it? thing. It's that, not. That, that, it's so, not you. It's some cloak you're trying to put on or... Yeah, and um, it might not be right for you. Um, so yeah. I talk a lot about um, zone of content genius. So content is a top... Like, Brand is the base of everything, but content, yeah. whatever type of content that is that's right for you, is much further. I always think of it as a trifle because I love trifles. So the, the brand is the bottom, like it's the sponge. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. sponge, yum. But and the content is actually like the dream topping at the top, the custard. Yeah. So it's whatever we're putting out within this zone of content genius. If If someone says to you, which I see it all the time, is that video gets the best views, Video reels get the best views, gets the best um, whatever metric it is that you're looking at. And you really don't communicate well on video. Now, there's a line here, which is where the 90 day video challenge is good. It's like it breaks you through your barriers of getting yeah. used to being on video. Um, yeah. But that might not be the best me method of communication. So for me, example, I'm very happy on video now. I wasn't five yeah. years ago. I was like, if I have to be on video, I'm not even going to start this business because I hated how it looked. I hated how it sounded. I hated like just everything. However, I'm yeah, very yeah. comfortable on video now, but I communicate better in copy, in written. So even though I'm very confident yeah. on video, I communicate because I go off on tangents all the time, better yeah. in copy. <clears throat> Um, yeah. So this is very different to because so that's right for me rather than yeah. videos get the best reach. Videos yes, get the therefore, best, well, I'm not bothered about reach. I want people paying me like because Yorkshire Water yeah. want pounds off me, <laughs> not <laughs> video <laughs> views, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's oh, yeah. different. So the biggest thing is trying to do what other people are doing, and it's not true to you at all. That's the biggest. Well, this is this is very interesting to me because you know, I you know the thing I, I'm a coach and you know and have, and but the thing that I'm passionate about is is yeah people finding their authenticity and, Ooh, and that's because should that's, I have that's word my, in 2018. And that well, that's because it's been my personal journey, right? Yes, yeah, you know, yeah. like getting out of being you know, what I thought I had to be or should be or could, you know, how do I survive? You know, who do I have to be in order to not, you know, you know, shut? And so, yes, the, the, the willingness to embrace the learning required to just be yourself. Yes. <laughs> it's not easy Which either. is actually unlearning, isn't it? It's unlearning. It absolutely actually. is unlearning, yeah. yeah. It's not easy. Unlearning. No. It's not I easy. Agree. Yeah. But it's so yeah. worth it. Yeah. Thanks, Holly. Fantastic. You're very welcome, Ross. Anyone else? Nicholas. Yep. Oh, oh, you've remuted. Hi, Holly. Oh, who else is that? Is Nicola ready to go? So we've got Colin and Colin. Nicola. Go for it, Colin. Hi. Can you hear Hello. me okay? I can. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a trainer, so I've been training people for 34 years, and I'm used to talking to people in classroom situations yeah uh, last six months on zoom reluctantly but now opening lots of doors so I'm getting used to that I'm sapping up like a sponge all the stuff that I'm learning on this program especially from you know Alex's um videos and everything and last night I'm up at two o'clock in the morning I'm looking at links to Amazon for um spotlights and and teleprompters and i'm thinking yeah. crikey you know i'm gonna have to go back to reading off scripts i talk to people for whole days on the time uh, at a time without a script so yeah. just everything you talk about here resonates with me the, the biggest moment for me when i leapt into a different stratosphere with my training was when i threw my scripts away and yeah. now th 30 years later I've got an expert telling me you're going to need a teleprompter and read a script and produce a really glossy advert. And I'm thinking, I'm going to have to learn how to put makeup on and God knows what else now. <laughs> and, and it's like, I, I need a balance somewhere. Do I need yeah. all this equipment? Am I going to need to, to completely change everything? Because what I want to really be is just me. Yeah. So there's a balance somewhere, isn't there? There's the, there's the, the advert 
that's going to grab people's attention because it looks really professional and you look really smart. Oh, one of my favourite words. Um, what even is professional? What does exactly. professional mean? Am I not professional right now? Am I Absolutely, not? yeah. You know, exactly. this, is, <laughs> this is the best way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. But, but when you look at the, the videos, you, you're seeing somebody reading off a, a teleprompter. They're looking into that bloody... The green light in your green light laptop. thing. Yeah. I want to look at okay. people's fa faces on the screen. Let me address you know that. I mean? So, um, right. When we, everything needs to be intentional. Everything we do needs to be intentional. Otherwise, what's the point? We're just doing it for the sake of doing it. Um, going back to Jay's thing about like, are we doing something just to avoid doing something else? So we we need to be intentional. Now, the, the job of an advert is intended to get people to do the next thing that you want them to do, whether that's watch the webinar in your case, um, if you're doing a webinar funnel, whether that's buy your thing, if it's a, um, a straight, directing them straight to buy, like whatever it is, the job of an advert is to do that. Do you need to read off a teleprompter? Like I would rather suck a tub of Marmite through a straw than read a teleprompter um, because I it makes me feel restricted. I like to feel free and flowy. However, knowing that one of my downfall, well, is it a downfall? One of my things is I go off on tangents. Do I, would I be better off with um, a couple of bullet points to just keep me on track? So teleprompters definitely have a place, but again, it's what's right for you. It's not right for everyone. There's no way I would read off a teleprompter, but mm. I do have a post-it note right next to the camera with three bullet points on to make sure that I hit uh cover the structure of the advert and practice. The more you do it, the more, um, I would just rather like say it out loud a million times. So it just becomes the thing that I say than, uh, than read it off a teleprompter. Because for me, that feels unnatural and I wouldn't be communicating very well because I'd be thinking, shit, how fast is this thing going? Oh my God, are my eyes moving? Can you see my eyes? Like that's what would be going on in my head rather than delivering the message really clearly and powerfully. So do you need it? For some people, um, it'd be it's amazing and definitely would work for them. For other people, not so much. So it's it's back to what's right for you. I tend to do what you've been doing here, which is using PowerPoint to prompt me to talk yeah. about what I need to say to people. Yeah, and that comes across a lot more naturally, then, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's different for different people. It's um, it's just finding what works for you and 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 running with that for every like everything in business well and life but it's uh, just because someone tells you to buy sorry Alex to buy a teleprompter and use a teleprompter that might not be the best thing for, for you specifically but it might be a godsend to somebody else yeah well, and Alex is he training doesn't tell us to do it though so so he doesn't tell us to buy a teleprompter yeah. it's just a it's just a possibility yeah, he doesn't he, use he, it himself. The thing right? is, when you watch these videos, you, you you look at what they're using and you think, oh, well, I, I must need that then because that's how you do it professionally. That's how it's going to look really brilliant. And that's why I bought into it. I know? wouldn't, um, I wouldn't like overthink, I wouldn't overthink things like that. I would just do what feels right for you. And you'll, you'll, you'll soon find out if you do something, like whether it's, um, um, do I need, a, a light ring well if your videos um are really badly lit there and you're not in natural light then maybe that's a good idea so you'll soon find out if you need stuff just yeah. go one step further and be like oh hang on a minute actually i could do with that i can't so even go. i can't even get a background thing working here so so i just use my art yeah. <laughs> behind me and, and nobody, nobody's I mean, ever complained about it <laughs> There's always stuff we can do differently and there's always stuff we can improve stuff. The, the, the different, like, I don't want to go down and add spiral here because that's definitely not my expertise, but it's the, um, it's got to, it's got to bring out whatever the background is. It just needs to bring out in line with the message that you're trying to get across. It's reinforcing the message, whether that's the, like walking around a park and filming it around a park. Like some of the adverts that I put out for people, um, all my clients put out like they are the most <laughs> unprofessional videos that that professional seeking people um, would like completely be think what that what is that why are you putting ad spend behind that but they're the best converters again it's different for everyone you're a different human 
you've got people have got different audiences you've got a different message it's how you deliver that as long as everything lines up the integrity uh with what you're saying who you're saying it to and the core message of your business of your brand that's that's enough that's enough. that's brilliant that's like a yeah. weight off my shoulders just hearing that you know because you, you do get into the habit of thinking oh well if the experts are telling you this that must be what you need to do and yeah. what you're saying here is you need to just go with the flow and be yourself. And that's what I've always believed in. But you question that when you start thinking, well, if they're that successful, this is what I must, I need to change. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's the balance between how much do I need to change to get it right? And how much do I need to continue being myself, which I know is right. We can always optimize yeah. stuff. Like we can always, you don't just get an ad and you buy even the, the best converting ads there's always stuff you can do different and better to optimize like you don't just wake up and like i've nailed it like i'm absolutely the best this is ever gonna be You're like mm. how good am i mm. even even once you get to that like you're still looking for tweaks like ha, let me try this let me try that will this work better so yeah yeah just Thank go you. with it you'll soon find yeah. out okay. everything's um, a test isn't it? It is. It's a big fat science lab. Like this is that's it what is. business is. It's just a huge science lab, and hopefully nothing blows up too much in your face. And and experts can tell you anything, Colin. Like you know, you you there are a hundred ways to skin a cat. More than that, but at the end of the day, the only person that is ever going to give you the actual answer of whether something is going to work or not is your audience mm. and things like the background the lighting and all of that stuff sometimes it can have an impact but the only way you'll find that out is by testing it and seeing what the conversion rate is right. so why don't you try an auto cue ad and a off the cuff ad and split test them and see yeah. which one converts better and right. and you know just Test lots of different things and yeah, find what yeah. works for you. Thank you. Fabulous. Nicholas. Yes. Hi. Um, I, I don't mind your Leeds accent. I'm from the South, but I've been a Leeds United fan all my life. So. <gasps> oh, my family. I don't care about football, but my family, my son will be very impressed. That I've spoken to a Southerner who supports Leeds United. Uh, no, I, I found that the, this your your uh, inputs really, really fascinating because I was in you know, school, corporate life, all my, most of my working life. Worked for really big corporations, uh, British Airways, Swiss Air, Danza, all sorts of DHL. And I always found that um, in corporate life, you had to be very careful about being yourself. And I've actually left jobs because I've said, oh, look, I'm not taking this shit. I want to be me. Yeah. So actually, this is a very, really big encouragement for me to just go out and do it uh, and, yes. and, and be, be myself. And yeah. I actually love, I mean, I love going, and what I'm, what I'm thinking is, um, or my problem, I have. I love going into um, a room of people. I just see loads of opportunities for, for to talk to people. Um, one of my bosses in in, uh, in what previously said, uh, "Yeah, Nick Trobe is the he's the world champion of uh, of small talk." And yeah. I, I just yes, I, I just love people. I like, but I find it. Or I'm I'm just starting out on the journey, so I'm I'm finding it a little bit. That's the sort of question for me. How do I who are how do I transfer that <laughs> online? I mean, I don't. Oh yeah, I guess that's going to be a how do you transfer being yourself? Being, being yourself, being myself and walking, you know, how can I transfer that? What I love doing is walking into a room of people, talking to people, how can I sort of transfer, take that passion and, and put it then uh, uh, online and digital, yeah. Yeah. But I think you so, do that. I mean, if that's what it seems like to me, that's you come across as very, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, so this is, again, so this is really, this is where things are different for different people. So it might be that, um, it's like the for a non-woo person, do you know, the older I get, the more like woo I'm letting in. So like energy, where you get your energy from, what lights you up, if that is having a um people like a group setting, whether that's you're on a stage, you're speaking to people, whether mm -hmm. um you're delivering group programs, whether you do things like that, you can then you tailor how you communicate with your ideal audience to make sure that you are giving, you are emulating that. So it might be yep. that you do, um, you invite people to live webinars so you can engage with people. It might be that you do um, Facebook Lives or Instagram Lives or whatever platform is right for you Right. Um, to have the two-way conversation. It might be stop the press that you do in real life events like that might be your Actually, thing that yeah. you use whether you're doing ads or whether you're doing uh, organic stuff or whatever your uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for, strategy is, it's with the intention and focus of getting people, like people around you. So if you know that when people are around you and the, 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 they actually see you, that they're going to convert at some point mm-hmm. into clients, then that's what you need to set up for yourself. Other people would just crawl and die inside at the thought of having to do that. But right. if that's where your, um, if that's your thing, it's that mm-hmm. if that's your weird and wonderfuls and your quirks and isms, that's what you use. We play to our strengths and what we Brilliant. love doing. Yep. Thanks very much. For the, the, very welcome. The Amazing. Is that all the questions? Any more questions? We are over. Oh, Diana. I, yeah, I just have one question though because I'm just listening to you guys and yeah, absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, so much uh, interesting stuff. I just want to ask you because I've got quite a, I, I think I've got quite a unique thing, but it's a bit strange. And I guess I just want to ask your opinion on my idea. Go for so it. I've been doing crochet and I started doing crochet because of lockdown and because of anxiety and because of social anxiety. So it's, for, for me, it's very difficult to speak with a group because you know what social anxiety is. And yeah. through crochet, I have actually managed to really overcome it. Yeah. And this is my thing. But how do I, I, I don't know. It's, do you think it's weird? Do you think it's strange to position myself like this? In- no, absolutely not. In fact, the, the weirder, the better. Um, that doesn't mean if your thing isn't weird that you can't be successful, because you can. But so what do you do with your crochet? What's, do you? So I, well, I've got an Instagram account and currently I'm just posting pictures of stuff that I have made. What's, um, what's the solution that you offer? What's the problem that your customers have and what's the solution do you provide for them? Are they coming to learn crochet or is the crochet a tool within something else? Cro- crochet to, to, to help with anxiety. Right. Yeah. I think, yeah, that would be, what, what do you guys think? That, would that work? I don't know. I'm just. Yes, everything. So... Right. Okay. Let me address this as well, because we all search for validation, approval, and for someone to tell us what we're doing is okay. Reassurance. That's the word I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, what we think doesn't matter because we're not your ideal clients. So when we post stuff out there, and we all do it or have done it, if you don't do it anymore, we post stuff out saying, what do you think of these guys? Because we're searching for reassurance and validation. Yeah. Uh, when it doesn't matter what usual, unless you've, you're asking your ideal audience that question, what anyone else thinks doesn't matter because they're not you and they're not your ideal audience. So what we think uh, as a general thing is is it weird and is it right like it doesn't matter but the answer is it's not weird and it is right so if that's the the reassurance that you're looking for yeah it's that he's building a, what's the it, I'm not asking you to answer this now but for you to think about what's the core message of your business your brand whatever it is that you're building mm-hmm. what's the core message of that why does it matter so you know it works because it's worked for you you've got the yeah. evidence for that you know it works but it's building a bigger picture around why why it matters and who that is a solution for to what problem. So there's a bit of avatar work there, ideal client yeah. work, mm-hmm. a bit of uh, messaging work there, and it has to be true to you. It has to be true. Yeah, it has to be true to you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I'll yeah, give it absolutely. Some run with Thank that. You. Run with that as fast as you can. Okay. Thank you, Holly. You're very welcome. I love that color jumper as well you put on. Um, yeah. Oh, it's top actually. So. You should follow me on Instagram. I've got some really great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fab. Amazing. Thank you so much, Holly. Thank you for staying longer to answer questions. Much appreciated. Um, it's been great to have you here. Guys, we actually have another session next week um, with another guest expert. Um, and it, I think it kind of, in a funny way, leads on really well from this one because what Holly's been talking about is really being yourself um, and presenting that in your marketing, in your business, as your brand. And sometimes it's really hard, especially if you've had like a life full of working, looking after kids, being really busy. I've spoken with so many business owners or want people that are wanting to start a business, especially in affiliate marketing, who are like, 
I, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm passionate about. I don't know what my thing is. I don't know what my passions are. And that's a really common, common feeling um, when people are at the start of this journey. And actually what happens in my experience is that the more time you spend on your business, the more new skills that you learn, the more things that you test, the more that you put yourself out there, the more you discover about yourself. But at the beginning, it can be a bit of a um, bit of a stepping stone to just figure out, you know, what are my values? What is my passion? Who am I? And all of these things. So next week we have um, a gentleman called Mr. John Jackson, JJ, coming to talk about what he calls purpose and how to pinpoint your purpose so that you can uncover who you are using his methodology. It's a process that I've been through. It's a process that Alex has been through. I think Holly went through it at one stage as well, and it's really powerful. So come back for that. Pinpoint your purpose next week with JJ. Um, and a huge thanks to Holly. Um, guys, say thank you to Holly over on Instagram. If you're over there, tag her, thank her. Um, so I'm sure she'll appreciate that. Thank you so much, Holly. We will see you very soon. Bye, guys.